The price of freedom is death. We're coming to get our check. Black first, my brothers and my sisters, welcome to the Afro Elite YouTube channel. I'm your host, Afro Elite. Before we get started, please make sure every single last one of you all, make sure that you guys hit that like button, that subscribe button, double check to make sure that you guys are subscribed. Just double check. Double check, make sure you guys subscribed, hit that notification bell, double check to make sure that's on too. Uh, share this, retweet this, post, post this on your Facebook all of that helps, and we're going to have a really good conversation tonight. So I want a lot of people, as many people, in here live as possible because this is a conversation that might feel like uh, this is, you know, sports or whatever the case is, but there's a very deep – hold on. My audio is, is good. It's a very deep racial tone to this, <coughs> excuse me, that we absolutely have to discuss. Now, if you guys remember last year, we did a live stream on this. And I'm going to, I can't put that for it, whatever reason in the comments right now, but I will do that after the fact. But before we do, I want to give a shout out to every single, there's a couple things we got to get off. I want to give a shout out to everybody who's been purchasing the new merchandise and then we have the fba thing we still have a two days for the 20 percent off sale a lot of people like the new design that's the thing you see on the top of the logo a lot of people like the fba logo love it that's our best seller love it every can't get enough really okay so everybody's loving that it's 20 percent off everything 20 percent off everything another thing uh, we also have to remember today, April 4th, was the day Dr. King was assassinated. He was assassinated today. So we have to, this this is a day to remember that his memory lives on and that his fight, which is our fight now, he's passed the baton and the fight to us, it lives on through us. So salute to Dr. Martin Luther King. Another thing, um, actually, I'll save that to last. I'll save that to last, but salute to Dr. King. So getting all of this stuff, a shout out to everybody in here. Shout out to everybody in here already. All of this stuff happened, and we talked about this last year. A lot of this, this racial tension, which is really what it is, the racial tension between Angel Reese, which is the black girl, and Caitlin Clark, which is the right, white girl, started last year at the championship game when this situation happened okay this is the you can't see me taunt a lot of people know um players who do this taunt i think the most famous person who does this taunt is john cena from the wwe this taunt was done last year this taunt was known to be done just keep in mind everything i'm about to say if y'all got to take a a pen and a paper, y'all might want to do that. Keep in mind everything I'm about to say. This taunt was known to be done by Caitlin Clark. She does this and she taunts all of the other players. She's known to have done this. She did it when she was up against LSU last year. She was, they were winning at the time. And then that's when she did the whole, you can't see me. She was taunting. Nobody had an issue with it it was not a problem everybody was cool with it everything was fine she was known to do that lsu really angel reese changed the tides of the championship and then right pretty much towards the end when everybody knew okay lsu was gonna win the buzzer was about to be over the game was about to be over Angel Reese does the same you can't see me taunt. She does the same you can't see me taunt. And man, did people lose their minds. People absolutely lost their minds. They were calling her everything of under the sun except the child of God. They were sitting up there. She was classless. She was unprofessional. She was showing poor sportsmanship. Uh, ship. Her parents didn't raise her right. 
it was all of this. It was so calling her a monkey. They, there was people calling her a monkey and all of these things. They had all of this um, anger towards Angel Reese that they didn't have to Caitlin Clark. They did not have an issue despite the fact that Caitlin Clark did the exact same thing first. She did it first. And that was Angel Reese's response to it. But when it comes to Angel Reese, because she's black, that's what it is, because she's black, you can't taunt the white girl. Don't don't taunt the white girl. Don't when when you're black, because if she was black, if Angel Reese was black and Caitlin Clark was black, it wouldn't have been a problem. But the fact that, oh, that's a white girl, oh, you don't showboat to white people. Oh, you don't rub it in to white people. You don't gloat to white people. Oh, no, 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 no. You need to have class. You need to have sophistication. You need to have sportsmanship. You don't do that to the white girl. No, 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 you you little Negro girl. You don't do that. that so we was calling that out last year. It was a big thing. So it was less them to who turned this into a rivalry and really the dominant society who turned this into a rivalry between her angel and um caitlin it was them because they wanted caitlin to come back they wanted a comeback story because to them this is a white versus black this isn't uh lcu and this isn't i this isn't them this is white versus black to them that's what that is so, leads us to the sports, the, um, the situation has been built up over the course of a year. So, throughout this, we've had multiple reports come out, and there was this one report, and they really took it down, But so I'm going to show you as much as I can of it, but they really took it down, okay? So, check this out. This real quick. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you, brothers and sisters. I see we got a lot of people in here already. If you guys please make sure you guys hit that like button. Make sure you guys hit that like button. All right. So we're just going to look at a little bit of this. So we just get to to quote. We're just going to quote it a little bit. OK. So from the L.A. Times and this is some sorry apology but these were the things that were stated in the LA Times right here. Um, it was saying, um, the article st uh, starts by saying, this isn't a basketball game, okay? That's your first indication, brothers and sisters, that's your first indication that this wasn't about basketball. This was beyond basketball, and this goes into sports in general. When when you see white versus black, to them it is a representative of white versus black. It is not just about the sport, okay? It is white versus black right here, okay? this Because why would you say this isn't a basketball game? It's a reckoning. It's a reckoning. Just notice the words that they're using. Picking size picking sides goes well beyond school allegiance. Okay, what does it go beyond school allegiance then? Why why does it go beyond school allegiance? Why is it so important for it to go beyond school allegiance? Because this is about a racial allegiance. That's what it is about. It says it previously stated, do you prefer America's sweethearts or its Dirty deputants, milk and cookies, or Louisiana hot sauce. Now that line has been removed, but you can't really get more racial than that. It's uh, America's sweethearts. So what makes, essentially they're talking about Caitlin Clark. What makes Caitlin Clark America's sweethearts? Now, I need you guys. We have over 100 people in the chat room, brothers and sisters. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know what we got to do. I need you guys to remember that they call that this article or the L.A. Times article, because this is just quoting from the L.A. Times. I need you all to remember the fact 
that they're referring to Caitlin Clark and her team as America's sweethearts and as Angel Reese and her team as the dirty deputants. Angel Reese is the Louisiana hot sauce and Caitlin Clark is the milk and cookies. Okay. Then the second line reads, do you prefer the team that wants to grow women's basketball or the one that seemingly hell bent on dividing it? Okay. All right. Now, here's something else that's very important. That's definitely going to be brought up later. This is a quote from Angel Reese after all of the backlash that she was getting. She says, quote, I'll take the villain role. I'll take the hit for it. But I know we're growing women's basketball. And if that uh, is the way we're going to do it, this is the way we're going to do it. You either like it or you don't. Angel Reese said in a press conference. So she said she'll take it. She didn't say she wanted to be the villain, but she said, if y'all going to make me the villain, I might as well be. Now, you want to say dividing women's basketball. I want you guys to understand. And let's let's be very, very, very clear about this. Very clear. Angel Reese is really the reason why we're talking about this situation in the first place. Let's be very clear about that. Very, very clear. Before Angel Reese and her situate and her winning the championship, women, especially college basketball, was not really a thing that people were paying attention to. At that time, it was record breaking the championship. It had the most views. Now, this one, this year, the one a few days ago, had over 12 million. But the one last year in 2023 was record breaking at that time. And that was because of Angel Reese, because of her performance. Caitlin Clark, I will give the fact that Caitlin Clark, she can play ball. She can. She scored the most points in the, the last championship game than any other player in, in women's college basketball. Okay, all right. But does that make her America's sweetheart? Because the way the article was making it seem like Caitlin Clark was out there volunteering and, and feeding the homeless. That's the way the article makes it seem. Caitlin Clark is out there saving orphans. That's the way the article is making it seem. She's out there saving the world and feeding the homeless orphans. You, you think that Caitlin Clark was doing that, okay, by calling her America's sweetheart, okay? Keep in mind, we got a lot of people starting to come in. That may, that's because you guys are hitting that like button. I appreciate you guys. Keep that in mind. So we're going to play a couple of clips, and we're going to kind of really evaluate how um, uh, America's sweetheart, Caitlin Clark, really plays the game. Because Angel Reese is the villain. They're telling her she is the villain. Because she's taunting and she's arrogant and she's boastful about, okay, all right. So let's let's look at what the sweetheart, how the sweetheart plays the game. But before we do, y'all y'all already know we got to, you know, protect the channel. So here we go. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Okay, we got that covered. So check this out, y'all. Check this out. So we got this thing. This is her. And I'm gonna I'm we're gonna slow it down a little bit. This is her. She's playing a game. And right here, if you can see in the beginning, this is her. The 22 is her. It's going to zoom in and then it's going to play again. I zoomed it in and I'm going to play it again. Okay. Push. It zooms in and plays again where this the woman in the purple is trying to guard this shot or block this shot. Angel Reese comes in. And completely like knocks her over. Knock how to move, which is a foul. When she gets called out for the foul, 
She sent him up there yelling at the ref. And if they're open, she will find them. Yelling at the ref for them calling that a foul. To the extent that her dad, that's her dad, her dad had to tell her to shut up. Martin commits the foul. Okay. Clark thought. So another one where she's playing, and this probably this looks to be the same girl. She's playing, she grabs the ball, and she pretty much throws herself to make this point. Clark, offensive foul. And then we're going to zoom in one more time. This is America's Sweetheart, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you America's Sweetheart. She jumps in this girl. Offensive foul. This girl down. Okay. A foul, foul. And then she just Offensive foul. Out. To 30. Now. After this, after this, the ref clearly calls her out again, and she gets all up in the ref's face. Hawkeyes now, over Holy has to tell her to back up. Her team, her fellow teammates have to push her off the ref. This is, this is her walking up to the ref. Yes. Oh. Pretty much having to like, all right, come on now. Like, hey, come on now. Like, oh, oh. And she just came in. Yes. Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeyes trying to work okay. through some issues. And her dad, look at her dad. Don't know what to do with her. Now, that's America's sweetheart. My brothers and my sisters. That's America's milk and cookies. Okay, now, mind you, Angel Reese is the villain because she taunts and she's boastful and she doesn't have good sportsmanship. Was that good sportsmanship? Okay, but we're not done, though. We're, we're not done. Another one. This is really good sportsmanship right here. Look at this. Angel Reese. Hold on. What is it going to play? Come on. Caitlin Clark's turning into three. Listen, really listen. Emotional. Her dad's already on record saying... Chill the hell out. Watch this. She goes, shut the F up. They show him, and he's like, yeah, no, I don't like when you do that. Watch the slow-mo. She says, shut the F up to somebody that's probably screaming at her. It's going to play it a couple of times. Right there. Shut the F up. She's so, so she's sitting up there. She's yelling at somebody. She's probably screaming at her. F up. Look at it. Oh, that's America's sweetheart, ladies right and gentlemen. There. Oh, that's America's Shut sweetheart, up. ladies and gentlemen. She's spicy, man. Okay. Okay. That's America's sweetheart, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. But if y'all thought that that was it, and we already got 200 people in here, y'all already know what we got to do. We cooking. We are cooking. Not even 20 minutes in, 200 people in. So we we in here. We are in here deep. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button. Y'all hit the uh, 100 emojis in the chat so we can get as many people in as possible. All right. That's America, sweetheart. Now, another thing. I got another clip to play you. This is America's sweetheart, mind you. She's not the villain. And nobody is calling out this type of behavior. Nobody is villainizing this type of behavior, okay? Now, had any of this stuff been done by Angel Reese, they'd be playing it over and over and over. Like, Angel, you know you can't be doing that now. You can't be yelling at the ref now. Why you got it? Mm -mm. They wouldn't give her no grace. Now, with Angel Reese, okay, she get all the grace. I mean, with K Caitlin Clark, all the grace in the world. All right, okay. Check this out. Check this one out. The offensive end is scoring against a much bigger defender. So, if you guys didn't see that, this one player is guarding Caitlin, and Caitlin just takes both her hands and shoves this woman to the ground. She don't got the ball or nothing. Takes both her hands and shoves this woman to the ground. Challenge on the offensive end of scoring against a much bigger defender. Martin. Here's another angle. Here's an, now yeah, now they get mad really at her. Now she's snapping off and got a little this. attitude. Here's another angle. With her defender. I think it's a shooting. Okay. This is Caitlin. Caitlin's in the white. The other girl is in the black. Look at this. Challenge underneath or something against Clark, which they may now elevate. She her just, 
frustrated that she got into the, some the game is not even really she doesn't have that, the ball or out. anything. Yeah, Clark She's is just really in the frustrated way. that she got into some contact. And then the way the news is reporting it, oh, well, she's frustrated and she got into some contact. They call that contact. Oh, she, well, she, she got into some, some, you know, contact. No, no. Um, that's not no contact. She didn't get into contact with anybody. Okay. That's not contact. Okay. Okay, hold okay. I'm, I'm gonna play one more time. Hold on, let me see. With her defender, I think it's a shooting foul underneath. Bam. What was that for? Or something against Clark, which they may now elevate to a, a flagrant or an intentional foul. What was that for? This is America's sweetheart. And you're right, Sage. Even the reporters are on call. They all well, they uh that's a foul. No, that had had that been Angel Reese, and she did that to a white girl, that would be called assault. That's what they would call that. They would say that that's assault. Just look, this is America's sweetheart. So just keep this in mind for context as we go forward. I think there is a shooting of, of, of true good underneath. sportsmanship. Or something against Clark, which they may now elevate to a, a flagrant or an intentional foul. Oh, damn. Okay. Dude. Okay. That's how she feels. Okay. All right. Now, that's America's sweetheart, y'all. For context, going in. So... After the game, there was a thing, and we knew for so – here's how you know the fact that all of this was racial because white folks was literally out here admitting the fact that it was racial. Look at this. This was some of the tweets. I only got one. I didn't need to pull up a million tweets. One of the tweets, whites had to remind black people we invented the game. We are the best. There is no debate. Okay. Okay. That's them. That's them admitting the fact that this is racial. That's them admitting the fact that this is racial. This is this does not have anything to do with, oh, I just like this team and you like that team and I just want my team to beat your team. No, this is a racial thing that no that everybody's sitting up there acting as if is not a thing. They're acting as if this is not a thing. So afterwards, Angel Reese was they did a press conference. This was the big championship game. They lost the championship game. Oh, and everybody's going to be upset about that. So afterwards, there was a press conference that was done on the situation. And we're going to uh, look into this. Hold on, come on now. I'm going to look into that a little bit. I already played the copyright thing. Now, her teammates know. Her teammates know full well the extent to what she's going through. Her teammates know full well exactly what's going on with her and, and how she gets treated racially different from everybody else and the over-criticism she gets from everybody else. I could hear you uh, on Angel and the type of leadership that she's provided for this team. And Angel, can you just take me through what now, it meant to see? Uh, and I'm playing this because everybody gets to the point where Angel starts crying. I'm playing this so you have the full context of it. Not just the one little thing. You have to have the full context. Angel was the, uh, essentially the leader of the team. The interviewer asked uh, the black girl who's next to her, one of her best friends, about Angel and her leadership. And this is what she starts saying what Flaugier was able to do in a game like this to, you know, put up 23 points and, and be a factor on both ends. Bro, let me tell you something. Everybody can have their opinion on Angel Reese, uh, but y'all don't know her. Like, y'all don't know Angel Reese. I know Angel Reese. I know the real Angel Reese. And the person I see every day is a strong person, is a caring, loving person, bro. The crown she wears is heavy, bro. She's the type of teammate that's going to make you believe in yourself. The, the leap that I took from my freshman to sophomore year, Angel gave me that confidence to go be a dog, playing next to a dog every day. And, you know, just to see how the media ridicule her, went through our problems. But, like, this is my sister right here. 
And I'm so proud of her. Like the media, y'all, how they like to twist and call it a villain and all of that. Y'all don't know Angel, bro. And I'm just happy that I get to play with her. I get to be around her presence. Her energy is different. Like she, she just made me a better player. She made me a better player. And that's what great players do. Shout out to that sister and her support. Okay. That's, that's the type of sisterhood that I really enjoy seeing. And she's saying this because she knows the media is going to really beat Angel Reese. They're going to drag Angel Reese under the mud for losing the game. Has she won the game? She wouldn't have won the game properly because she won last year and she didn't win the way she was supposed to win. And now she lost this year and it's ha ha and she was getting ha ha and booed and people were waving at her and taunting her the whole time prior to this interview. Nobody wants to bring that up, but prior to this interview, as soon as the game was over, she was getting booed and taunted. And that didn't happen to uh, Caitlin Clark last year. Caitlin Clark did not go through that last year. Just keep that in mind. Okay, let's continue. I'll say something too. Um, I think, you know. That this is the, the white girl. Angel's one of the toughest people I've been around. Facts. Um, people speak hate into her life. I've never seen people wish bad things on someone as much as her. And and it does not affect her. She comes to practice every day. She lives her life every day. She she lives how she wants to live. And she don't let nobody change that. And you know, that's the that's the key to life right there. Y'all do not get to her. Uh, let me say it again. Y'all do not get to Angel Reese. So you might want to give it up. Throw the towel in because you're wasting your energy. So Angel's one of the toughest people I've been around. Right. Angel, this question will be for you if you, if you are willing to share what was going now, through I your mind. That white girl has also admitted on camera, that white girl has admitted on camera that they, there's racism in the league. Okay, so for everybody to be all like, there's no, y'all just can't take the heat. No, nah, you know it's something when the white, and I'm not sitting up there saying she's an ally or whatever the case is, but she has admitted it because it's very obvious. It is very obvious. But I want you to get to the point that both her teammates said something about the situation and how she is treated before she got up there because everybody is trying to make it seem like she just got up there after losing after um after losing the game and she's crying oh she's crying because she wants pity or whatever the case is her teammates was all like um you guys treat her in a way you guys don't treat anybody else in the whole league the whole league of women's college basketball there's a very unique level of hatred that you guys have for angel reese that no other female player experiences at all it's a very abnormal level of hatred for people who don't watch the game okay let's continue let's continue let me hold on let me go this up right here as you heard your two teammates right here on the dais just taking the, the opportunity to, to really stand up for you and, and what your journey has been like that we don't get to see. I don't really get to stand up for myself. I mean, I have great teammates. I have a great support system. I got my hometown. I got my family that stands up for me. I don't really get to speak out on things just because I just try to ignore and I just try to stand strong. Like I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and like not be there for them. So I just want to always just know, like, I'm still a human. Like, all this has happened since I won the national championship. And I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks, And but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything. And I would still sit here and say, like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you no, know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you. But 
keep being who you are, keep waking up every day, keep mo being motivated, staying who you are, staying 10 toes, don't back down, and just be confident. Okay. So before we get into that, before we get into that, was Angel Reese, it, based off of that, and you have the full context, based off of that with the full context, Angel was not sitting up there throwing a pity party. Folks is making it seem like Angel was like falling out the chair and she was boo-hoo crying with tears just falling like, no, no. And I believe everything she was talking about as far as the, the death th threats and all of that. I believe that. And I'm going to show you why. Let me show you the fact that she was not only getting deaf when she says she was sexualized. This is the stuff she's talking about right here. She's talking about the fact that they. There was a thing. Like last year where that when like the AI image thing was starting to really come out and people started to have access to it, they started making AI adult videos or adult pictures, AI fake nudes, and putting Angel Reese's face. They was like digitally making AI nudes of Angel Reese having sex. Okay, it says viral nude uh, photos. Of course, we're not going to show it, but viral nude photos AI created. Y'all weird AF, okay? My, I want you to keep in mind, Caitlin Clark is not going through this. This is a very abnormal because you you don't hear other female. She's not even pro. She's college. You don't hear other female college players going through this. Angel Reese is the latest celebrity victim with artificial intelligence gone bad after several nude images of the LCU hoop star hit the Internet. Photos she um, had meant are fake. Okay. The 21-year-old college basketball star addressed the controversy on social media Tuesday, writing Point Blake, creating fake AI pictures is crazy and weird AF. So that's pretty much all. But this is what they were doing. So we're, we're going to have to sit here and admit the fact that, okay, this is not a normal level of criticism. Everybody wants to be all like, oh, you you were just, yo, you were so big and so bad, and you were so big and so bad, now you're crying. Okay, well, hold on. She's been, and this is not her first time complaining about it. This is not her first time complaining about it. But every time she says something is, oh, you want to make this about race and it's not about race. Don't make it about race. And you got all of these um, folks in up there, this, this vitriol, because the thing is, is that she should have essentially stayed in her place. You don't gloat your victory over a white person. You don't get to do that. You don't get, to, not, not only did you beat her, you bragged about it and you gloated. See, when it comes to black athletes, and this goes for, we, we've seen this with, and we're just talking, just let's be specific when we talk about black female athletes, because we've seen this with uh, Venus and Serena Williams. We've seen this with um, uh, Bria Miles. We've seen this with, uh, Shakari Richardson. We've seen this with Angel Reese. We've seen this with all of these sisters, right? They have a thing of what you do. If you do it, even if you do it the best, you're supposed to keep your head down and you're supposed to be like, I'm sorry. I beat everybody. I'm so, I, I, I appreciate you guys for coming in. You're supposed to be like a little monk. You're not supposed to have a, a pride about yourself. You're not supposed to be prideful. You're not supposed to be confident. They don't like that when they're confident. There's this over, there's this thing of, okay, if you can win, but keep in mind, you're here to entertain us. We don't want to see you bragging like you're bigger than us. Don't do that. We don't like it when you, when you're bigger than us, when you're showing us that you're better than everybody else. And there's this over, um, um, Simone Biles. Yeah. Uh, I said Bria Miles. Simone Biles. Thank you. We don't like that when you do it. Exactly. All of the jacks, all you can do this with everybody. Okay. 
this goes from all female sports, all male sports. That's why they can't stand Floyd Mayweather because he beats the white dudes. Can't stand not because he brags, because Aaron McGregor from the um MMA brags all the time. People love it. It's it's his character. It's cool when he does it, but Floyd Mayweather, he's just too arrogant and uppity. He's uppity when he does it. They don't like uppity, talented, skillful Negroes. That's really, really what it is. Yeah, you can be talented. You can be skilled, but you damn sure better not be uppity. We don't like that. That's a bad combination for them. This is a racial issue. So to them, this is a, a white victory. They, they, oh yeah, this is a oh, good, good little white victory that we have over. You put her in her place, essentially is what it is. You put her in her place. Now, I want you to keep in mind the videos I showed you guys, and I'm going to show it one more time, just to show for the people who are just now coming in the room. This is Caitlin Clark. This is America's Sweetheart. Offensive end of scoring against a much bigger This defender. is her, and she's just shoving opponents down. We're in. Need to be able to sort this out. Yeah, Clark is really frustrated that she got into some contact with her defender. I think it's a shooting foul underneath or something against Clark, which they may now elevate to a, a flagrant or an intentional foul. Okay, so that's that's America's sweetheart, y'all. That's America's sweetheart who has all this class, who has all this sophistication, so ladylike and all that. That's America's sweetheart. And I wanted to play you a couple of clips of how angel reese gets criticized okay run from this dude i saw this guy just keep in mind about how personal all of her criticisms are not you could have passed more um you could have caught that layup or whatever the case is or that rebound you could have caught the rebound okay well um you should you shouldn't have dove for the ball you were being guarded too well it's not that all of her attacks are it seem to be very personal about it. Look, look at this. I know my car videos hit different. You know, y'all know the videos that I make when I'm in the car, it hit different. You know what I'm saying? This is why people don't like Angel Reese. We don't like Angel Reese because she victimizes herself any chance she gets. It has nothing to do with her being a black woman. It has nothing to do with her looking like a cute mosquito. It has nothing to do. Did you guys hear that? Did you guys hear that? It has not, first off, it has nothing to do with race. Okay. Now, all of the racial comments, y'all cannot deny the fact that it is racial comments. So what they're doing is they're overlooking all of the racial comments. Oh, it has nothing to do with race. Well, why were they calling her uh, uh, the N-word and why were they calling her a monkey? If it if it didn't have to do with race, why are they calling her the N-word and why are they calling her monkey? And then he's going to follow it up by saying she looks like a cute mosquito. Do you see how personal, what, like he's making it seem like he had an issue with her, like she rejected him or something like that. Why? What does that have? Why are you doing that? Now, he's not going to say that about Caitlin Clark. And Caitlin Clark is not on anybody's top 10 list. Caitlin Clark is not on nobody's top 10 list. Okay. So just, just listen to it again. The, like, dude, what is your issue at this point? It has nothing to do with her looking like a cute mosquito. It has nothing to do with her looking like a cute mosquito. Now, white people ain't going to get up. And this is one thing that we, we do got to stop doing. Because white people don't call their celebrities ugly. White people don't do that. White people, you don't see white people out here saying that Caitlin Clark is ugly. You don't see them doing that. But you'll see, oh, she looked like a cute mosquito. A white man is not going to say that about a white woman. But you as a black dude from wherever you're from is going to sit up there and uh, essentially a, a mosquito is an ugly bug. You're saying she looks ugly. Okay. But okay, listen to this. Just shucking and jiving. It has nothing to do with anything. You know what I'm saying? She victimizes herself 
any chance that she gets. I guarantee if she would have won that game today, she wouldn't have mentioned anything about the death threats, her being sexualized or all the other stuff that she said during that post game interview. She wouldn't have said any of that if she won the game tonight. And y'all know that. And y'all know that. You know what I'm saying? So we ain't got nothing to do. No, and that, the whole thing is, well, she wouldn't have said that if she won. She wouldn't have said that if she won. Okay, but is it not true? Keep in mind, nobody is saying that her criticisms are not true. Nobody is saying that what she's saying is happening to her aren't happening to her. They're just saying, why are you bringing it up? It doesn't matter. You shouldn't be bringing it up. That's what that that is what they're saying. Nobody is saying that. Oh, we got a uh, three hundred people in here. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Nobody is saying that that's not true. And I don't know who this guy is. He might be. He looks like he got like a little bit of like Hispanic in him. You know what I'm saying? He might be like half breed or a black Hispanic or something like that. And yes, I do notice that this grown man got two loop earrings in. Can't help but notice that. But let's continue. Nobody is racially being prejudiced towards her. It's just, man, be be a fucking professional athlete. You know what I'm saying? Because you're about to be a pro. Be now, all this be professional. Just 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 be professional. Be professional. Why are you not professional? Nobody. And I showed you multiple clips, and there's more. There's so much more. And it's so much more of her yelling at refs yelling at coaches, yelling at other players, telling other players to shut up, pushing other players, being very aggressive with other players. Nobody is saying, oh, Caitlin Clark, you are so unprofessional. Caitlin Clark, you need to be way more professional. What is wrong with you? Nobody says that. Nobody says that. She's America's sweetheart because she's white. She don't got to do nothing but be white. There's that nothing got to do with her playing ability because nobody is saying that Angel Reese can't play. She's not a good player. Oh, but she's like a bad person. And I'm like, okay, we're going to have the standard of she's a bad person. Where's the standard of C Caitlin Clark being a bad person? Because all y'all don't have none of this vitriol, none of this hatred, none of this smoke for Caitlin. Nobody in the, in the, um, ESPN locker room. Nobody's bringing up the multiple clips I've shown you guys. For a lot of you all, that's the first time you guys have seen it because they're not bringing that up. But if Angel Reese does something, it's over and over and over. It's she don't have no parents. She's classless. She she's unintelligent. She's a bad uh, player, a bad person. It's it's all of that. Let's let's finish to what this guy has to say because we got more. We got more we got to cover. So be accountable for that shit. You're lost. You're lost. It's okay. It happens. Don't be on social media spreading these victimized ass narratives about your personal life because you're lost. You wouldn't have did that if you would have won. We know that. So stop. That's why people don't like Angel Reese because she victimizes herself any chance that she gets. But when she wins, she talks all the shit in the world. That's why. No, no. Oh, it, that's why. And then he's going to smile at the camera. Okay. Go smile at the camera. If that's if that's the case, it, I just find it so very interesting. Where's all of the racial comments coming from? Why are they making fake nudes of this young girl? Why? Why? Where, where's all of that coming from? Nobody, and that's the thing. Everybody's all like, "Oh, you just, you just can't take a loss. You just can't take a loss. Can't take a loss." Nobody is saying. Keep in mind, nobody is saying that Angel Reese is wrong in any of the things that she said was going on, or any of the things that she said was happening to her. Also, keep in mind, and that's why I played you the clip from the beginning. Her teammates were the first ones to speak up for her. Her teammates were the ones who said, hey, Angel is not being treated fairly. 
Angel is constantly being beat up. Angel is constantly being uh, talked down at. Angel is constantly being threatened. I've heard some of the craziest stuff I've never heard to anybody else to Angel. This is her teammates who said that way before she said anything. She wasn't, oh, why is me? Why is me? Why, why, why? No, her teammate said, hey, y'all doing my teammate wrong. What is wrong with y'all? Her teammates st stood up for her first. Y'all, she's saying she get the death threats and y'all sitting up there saying, well, you, you shouldn't have been waving your finger then. Excuse me? Excuse me. Oh, okay. But look, we got more to cover. We have more to cover, brothers and sisters. So, Jason Whitlock is going to say something about the situation. Hmm. Jason Whitlock. It says, Angel Reese. And actually, I'm going to just play it. Do this, Angel Reese. Tell Kim Mulkey, hey, we want to be on the court for the national anthem. And we want to be on the court because I don't want to deal with the heat and the blowback from the people who are frustrated that we're not on the court for the national anthem. Now, a lot of people didn't like that either because, you know, there's a controversy thing going on with the national anthem or whatever the case is. A lot of people, including myself, even though I'm not an athlete, don't don't approve of the standing and holding your hand. A lot of people have mixed feelings about that. So instead of essentially protesting, they were just not on the court present. That's what he's referring to. OK, I just want you to know how everybody's sitting up there gloating about her her downfall. Everybody has this thing where when she lost, it's to kick a woman while she's down. I want you to think white athletes don't go through this. I, 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 let, let, me pop, let me get this off the screen for a second. Just, just one second so I can talk to y'all. White athletes don't go through that. Name a white athlete that when they take a big loss, when they lose a championship or anything like that, everybody's making videos celebrating and rubbing their hands together. Ha ha, you lost, you a loser. I'm not talking about your rival teammates or their supporters. I'm talking about just everybody in general, people who don't even watch the sport. People don't do that to white folk. People don't be like, ah, you lost, I'm so glad. Nobody does that to them. But when Simone Biles, when she leaves, it's, oh, you're so terrible. I'm glad you're gone. When Shikari Richardson, when she loses, oh, I'm glad you lost. When uh, Venus and Serena Williams, when they lose, it's, yeah, you lost. Like, you can clearly tell it's a racial um, a motive to it. It's a racial motive to it because they don't do it with nobody else. Unless they're a fan of the sport and they're a fan of the opposite team, then they'll just be all like, my team beat your team. But they don't they don't have that with other athletes, not male or female. They don't have that with other athletes, male or female. But there's something about black athletes that they want to see the downfall of black athletes. They want to see the humbling of black athletes. They like to see that. Okay. Yeah, and, and not even just app, just entertainers in general. Anytime a black entertainer, athlete, singer, rapper, when they like have a downfall, it's everybody. Oh, yeah, we can't wait. Love it. We love it. We love it so much. Nobody does that when any white entertainer has a downfall, when they get arrested, when they get suspended, when they lose a game, when they get injured. There's no big celebration. But when it happens to a black athlete, there's a, a big celebration. Everybody's like, yes, you've finally been put in your place, you Negro. Everybody gets like that, okay? So, yeah, exactly. It's a humiliation ritual. It, it really, really is. Now, let's continue. Let's continue. See, you can control what you can control. And, and the point of the media, both black and white, is to convince black people that everything is outside your control. Everything. Oh my God, if people are criticizing you, you can't do anything to lessen that. You can't tamp that down. You can't 
stand for the national anthem like virtually every other team and not bring that type of criticism on yourself? So, so essentially, and this is what I'm saying, this is bigger than just basketball or her crying. Why is he bringing up the national anthem? Now he's talking about, oh, things you can control. She was being called monkeys, death threats. People were threatening her on the court. On the court. You got white folks heckling her on the court because she won the game. And now he's sitting up there making it seem like it's all her fault. And again, Kim Mulkey answered the question yesterday when they talked about the national anthem, and they set up a routine where they're never on the court for the national anthem. That's a choice. And with that choice comes heat that Angel Reese and the LSU players have to deal with. And so Angel Reese finally lets us in and says, you know what? I've been miserable since I won this national championship. I got all this attention. I got all this money but I'm miserable and we need to be having that discussion with young people and making sure that they understand money and fame does not lead to happiness. And all these people you see running around flashing their money and living their best lives on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, the majority of them, anybody you see constantly posting content. Here I am out at dinner. Here's the meal I just had. Here's this. Here's that. Here's... It, they're miserable more than likely. Happy people don't do that. They're content with, hey, let me share this moment with the people. So, uh, and I, This is what I'm saying, this, and this is why I said this before. Notice where he's getting at. He's essentially getting at the fact that you should have been humbled. You shouldn't have been around gloating. You shouldn't have been around bragging. You shouldn't have been happy. They don't like it when black entertainers are really happy with their success. Doesn't matter how great they do. Doesn't matter what records they break. Doesn't matter what sales they make. It does None of that matters. You shouldn't show us that you're happy. You entertain us and then you disappear. I don't want to see your happy face. I don't want to see you smile. Don't no 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 don't do that. Not especially at a at the expense of a white person. Oh no, oh no. That's his problem. His problem was you shouldn't have been you should have been there shucking and jiving. And for every black athlete that's not out there, I don't see a race, man. I think everybody is the child of God. If, if every single black athlete who's not like that, they ooh, they, they want to see you fall. They want to see all of them fall, but especially the ones who aren't like that. Let's, he, he's almost done. Well, we might as well finish. Oh, hold on. Uh -uh. That's what I'm about. Might as well finish. People that I'm actually engaging with, the people I actually care about, all these randos that I got to put these pictures out for, I, I'm, I'm living for them. That leads to unhappiness. Because once you don't get as many likes as you think you should, once there's someone shows up in your comments saying things that upset you, they're in control of your happiness. You've turned it over to them. I mean, well, here's you the thing. Well, why is she constantly being threatened, you though? Control. It's because he's making it seem like she wants reason. approval from everybody. She, her, she is not the fact that she wants approval from everybody and a mama. It's the fact that, damn, does she deserve to be made um, a sex object? Is, is that it? Does she deserve to be made a sex object and threatened with racial slurs? Does she deserve that? If she says she doesn't want that, oh, well, you shouldn't have been out there gloating. You should have been humbled. Like I keep saying, keep in mind, nobody is saying that that stuff is not happening. Nobody is saying that that stuff did, is not, because it's very obvious. It's on record that that has happened. Nobody's saying that's not happening. They're just overgloating. Oh, well, you shouldn't. You just should have. You just should have been humble. Okay. Okay. And nobody really cares what Jason Whitlock has to say anyway. I just want you to see the extent that people are jumping out the window to gloat and to celebrate. Now, 
the back to America, sweetheart. Actually, let me get to some of the super chats. We had a few super chats. I haven't even acknowledged it. Thank you to um a brother DSB for the super sticker. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Fundraiser. Jason Whitlock also um had something st uh, stupid take on it. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. The fundraiser. Uh DSB, another one. And then Derek. Shout out to a good brother, Derek. Now. Gotta say it, gotta say it, right? America, sweetheart, everybody loves America, sweetheart, so damn much. I swear, when a white when a white person does something halfway decent, you got niggas bucking their eyes, bucking their eyes, man. They bucking their eyes, and to be honest with you, I'm a little disappointed. Let me show you something. I, I was very disappointed to see this. But look at this, y'all. Caitlin Clark, Big Three, offers her $5 million to join and could still play in the WNBA, a part of the contract, okay? The Big Three is owned by Ice Cube. So Ice Cube reached out to Caitlin Clark and offered Caitlin Clark. Yeah, it is. And he confirms it. We're going to look down in it. We ain't going to read all the details of it, but ice cube. And he confirms this himself has reached out to Caitlin Clark and offered her $5 million. And this was, this was uh prior. This was prior to the thing. He offered her $5 million so she can join the big three. Okay. The, now the first the first woman he's ever offered that to in college athletes, especially in the highest amount, was gonna be her. Okay. That's a that's a, that's a long way from contract to Black America, don't you think? We that's a long way from then, don't you think? Let me read this real quick, and then we I, I got a couple words for Ice Cube. But let, let me read this, and I got a couple words, okay? Just, just really his confirmation. It says, 7.30 a.m., Cube is now speaking out on the offer, saying it, will, it was a no-brainer to pitch Caitlin Clark to his organization. Quote, Caitlin is a generational athlete who can achieve – Tremendous success in the big three, he said minutes ago on X, which is Twitter. While also pointing out the league has a track record of breaking barriers with female coaches like Nancy Liberman and Lisa uh, Leslie. Oh, so this is Ice Cube confirming this. Okay. Okay. We're going to get to this point right here. It says, with our offer, Caitlin Clark can make history and break down even more barriers for women athletes. Cube added. Women athletes. Okay, okay, all right. Big Three founder also thinks his org will be better will be a better alternative for the WNBA athletes to make money during the off season so they don't have to take their talents to quote often dismal and dubious foreign countries to earn a living like um the other I, I'm forgetting her name the other athlete did when she was stuck in Russia continues to say and quote and they should have more than just one professional option in the U.S. at a time when America, American pro sports leagues are being infiltrated by um, autocratic anti-women regimes such as uh, Quadar or Quadar, Quadar. Don't know really what that means, he said. It says, our path-breaking offer to Caitlin Clark demonstrates that big three now offers another choice for athletes. Okay. This is ice cube y'all. And then at, at the, at the very end, at the very end, we're going to get to the, 
a little little bit to the very end. Because we got way more to cover, y'all. Y'all get locked in. Because now we got now we're about to get to the good stuff. Y'all get locked in. It says Caitlin Clark is online to make history the in NCAA um Phenom could become basketball's first ever five million dollar woman if she accepts accepts the massive deal from Ice Cube's big three league. TMZ Sports have learned. Okay. Okay. Let me let me get this off the screen. Let me get this off the screen and, and, and say a couple words. Folks gave Ice Cube his credit. I did for the contract of Black America. And we was all like, you know what, Ice Cube, you deserve your credit for that. You tried to take it, you know, um, you tried to do something for Black America. They really beat you down. And a lot of the credit and a lot of the reason why we started bringing that up was really because of the fact that we were showing the fact that Biden is bringing up all these rappers, but he's not bringing up the one he promised he would. But I want you to be very, let's be very, very clear. What has Ice Cube done since then? What has Ice Cube done since then? Okay. He's talked to Tucker Carlson, if you guys didn't know that. He had a whole interview with Tucker Carlson saying that we think about race too much. If you guys didn't know that. Yeah, we think about race too much. We give Ice Cube his credit for the contract of Black America, but should we? Let me ask you that question again. We give Ice Cube all of this credit for the contract of Black America, but really, should we though? Should we? Did he re- did did Ice Cube really do anything? Did he really move the needle? Did what he did did it really matter? I submit to you, it really didn't matter. Ice Cube didn't come up with the damn thing. We've already been talking about reparations. His thing was a weaker version of what we've been talking about. He came out. He asked to talk to Trump, to Biden. He pretty much was told no from both. Trump at least had the conversation. And then that's it. You ain't heard nothing about contract to black America. He let that go. He took his tail behind his legs or in between his legs and ran off. And for years, we have been giving him his respect for that. But let's actually reevaluate that real quick. Let's let's reevaluate that real quick. Does he deserve this credit for the contract of black America, a contract he did not come up with? A contract he has not been pushing. The first woman. Now you care about women. Okay. In the first woman, you're going to have a white woman. That's that's who you're going to have. And you're going to give her the biggest contract you've ever, uh, a woman's ever gotten. Oh, she should be tremendous to, to bring women in the league. Oh, really? Okay. 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 Fine. Now, this is, and I'm going to say this. This is what people be saying about athletes who be wanting to do who be all like y'all gotta support me i'm black man i'm black and i'm this and i'm that y'all gotta support me okay okay well i thought that the big three was supposed to be the black alternative to the nba i thought that the big three was going to be something for us the big three is seeming like you just trying to use your star power to create another league for yourself Okay, and this is your own personal little benefit. This isn't to benefit any of the other players. This isn't to benefit the black community. This isn't to do that. Okay, because you completely lost the whole your your willingness and your tenacity and your your passion and drive for the contract of Black America. We're at an election year right now. Today, we ain't heard nothing from Ice Cube. Nothing from Ice Cube. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm another thing. I'm, I don't want to bring up names. I really, really don't. I do, but I don't. I do, but I won't. Okay. I'm gonna tell you this. There's been Ice Cube knows very well. Ice Cube knows very well about the new black media. He knows about everybody. There's been folks who've reached out to Ice Cube, who've wanted to do an interview with him, who wanted to discuss things with him. 
he don't talk to nobody. He won't. He'll talk to Tucker Carlson. He'll talk to Tucker Carlson. He won't talk to us though. He's not coming over here doing anything with us though. Okay. You know when they get older, they start to really show their true colors. That that big three thing that nobody really hears about. To be very honest, nobody seen no highlights about the big three. The, the big three's never gone viral. Nobody knows no teams on a big three. Nobody knows no players on a big three. Nobody knows that. Nobody. And he's in to, to put the big three on, you're going to hire Caitlin Clark. Okay. Okay. And from what I was told, Caitlin Clark declined the deal. And I'm glad she did. I'm glad she did. Fuck, made a damn fool out of yourself. Okay. But I wanted, I just wanted to show you that th th the levels and the degrees of ass kissingness. Okay, I'm a, I'm gonna be honest. When you put, when you, can we say it? Can we say? And this might be uncomfortable, but we gotta say it. When you put black folk, and let's be very specific. Let, let, let's let's just handle the black men for a second. A lot of these black men who have a little bit of status, who, ha who have a little bit of celebrity, I'm not even going to say status, like celebrity, who are on the news and stuff like that, who get a blue check mark on their damn Instagram. A lot of those, you they will ass kiss a white woman to death. They will ass kiss a white woman to death. OK, a white woman do something halfway good and they sitting up there bucking their eyes. They tap dancing. I'm going to show you. Y'all want to see some tap dancing. I'm going to show you. They sitting up there tap dance. Oh, my God. She's so great. She's so wonderful. Bucking it. Oh, my God. Look at her. Bucking their damn eyes. It's pathetic. It is absolutely pathetic. It just It's just shameful. They, they do something halfway okay, and y'all like, oh, my God, you're so great. It's just, it is shameful. These blacks, and, and wonder why nobody sent up there respects you. Wonder why nobody really has that level of respect and reverence for you, Cube. Nobody really does. They used to because of what you used to be. But when you stop being that, then you stop being that. Damn, man. That's just sad. It is just sad, really. It really, really is. I want to show you this. Y'all want to see some buck dancing? Y'all want to see some buck dancing? Let me get to some of the super chats before we go, because we might be gone for a minute. Shout out to um, W1 Sons. I think that's W1 Sons 4 for the $20 super chat. Thank you very much. Keep up the great content. Thank you so very much. I appreciate your support. Another one from James says... Um, the kind of higher learning of our kids in HBCU schools should be um, obtained, obtaining. Yeah, that is true. Cut the check. Now, Ice Cube, with all that money, Ice Cube could be bringing black athletes out of high school. Ice Cube could be co creating programs in a black community. But he's not doing none of that. He's not doing none of that. Ice Cube is selfish as hell and looking out for himself. Ice Cube fell off years ago. Can we be honest? Can we, when is the last Ice Cube album? It wasn't really that long ago. Have you heard about it? No, because Ice Cube fell off years ago. Ice Cube ain't been relevant since the damn 90s. Ice Cube is not relevant. He's a, he, musically wise, yeah, he had his movies and stuff like that. And, oh, I, and I will give the, the icons their respect. We can't acknowledge the fact that they're not iconic in the community. But he's been... When's the last movie he came out with? That was really something. He had Friday, Friday After Next, stuff like that. He came out with a few movies. You can't really name all the movies he came out with. Keep in mind, Cat Williams did say that in the Friday After Next that Money Mike was supposed to be sexually assaulted in the bathroom. And that Cube was cool with that. And that Cat Williams had to speak against that. Y'all remember that? 
Y'all remember the fact that Cap, that Ice Cube was having Money Mike. He was going to be violated in the bathroom until Cat Williams said, hey, that's not cool. That's not funny. And he had to change Ice Cube's mind about it. Ice Cube also in another movie had another black man get violated in that fashion. So we're really going to have to start reevaluating how we view Ice Cube. We really are. Okay. Another one. Um, I, I think it's uh, Deidre says, great show. Um, first time catching a live. Oh, thank you so very much. I'm glad you're catching a live. I, I sincerely, I sincerely appreciate it. Okay. I really, really do. Now, before we get started, I want to show you this clip from last year. All right. This is the clip that, that went on from last year when Angel Reese did this, right? And this is Emmanuel Ocho. Come on, play it. Women's national championship for hoops. It took the ten attention of the whole world. But really, what took the attention of the whole world was this simple gesture. Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark. That's what everybody's watching and talking about. What I realized through watching yesterday's game and the backlash that Angel Reese's face for simply doing this was both gender bias and racial bias was exposed. Let's now, he's saying that this picture, this, this is essentially what he's talking about. He's saying that this is gender bias and racial bias at the same time. It's gender and racial bias at the same time, which is impossible. Because both Caitlyn and Angel have the same gender. And if it was fine with Caitlyn and is not fine with Angel and they have the same gender, then how are you saying it's a gender problem? It's clearly not a gender problem. They're both female doing the same thing. So how can you say it's a gender issue? Okay. But... I want you guys to keep in mind, they always say things are a gender issue. Let me just pause for it. They always say things are a gender issue because it takes away from the race issue. It kind of waters down the racial issue. That's what, oh, it's, a, it's really a gender. It's gender and it's race. When it's, when it's really a racial thing against us, they always like to put these additives on it because it waters it down and it muddies the water. Notice when they were doing like the stop Asian hate thing a couple years ago, they weren't saying, oh, this is Asian hate and this is sexism. They weren't doing that. When other groups of people get victimized, they don't, they don't add all of these other isms. When you have re other religious groups get victimized, we got 400 people in the chat room, or we did just a couple seconds ago. Y'all got to be on it. Hurricane, I see you, brother. When other religious groups of people get victimized, they don't add in the isms with it. Oh, this is a religious hate crime, but it's also a sexist hate crime. They don't do that. But when it comes to us as black folk getting victimized as well as race, but it's also gender. Hold on now. It's race, but it's also class. They always do that, and it waters it down. This this is why it's um a problem. It's problematic. And it doesn't make sense to use in this situation because they're both female, and one is okay, and one isn't okay. So how is it a gender issue? But l let's listen to him explain. Start with the gender bias. I remember covering college football. It was 2017, Oklahoma versus Ohio State. Baker Mayfield, after beating Ohio State, he goes and he tries to plant the Oklahoma flag in the middle of the Ohio State logo. We didn't talk about it. He's a man, a white man. We didn't say nothing. The most criticism Baker faced was for planting it on the turf. Nick Bosa, Ohio State alum, two years later, did the same thing when facing Baker Mayfield. Okay, cut to now college. Caitlin Clark, she's going to do it. Again, the Elite Eight against Louisville. But we didn't really have an issue with it. We praised her. She said she had the Mamba mentality. But then when Angel Reese did a very similar thing, all of a sudden she was classless. She was and that proves that it was race. That proves right there it's 100% about race. 
that he just he just said it's race and gender and then proved that it's not gender in the same statement she's an idiot she was tacky she wasn't raised right see i see both gender bias being expressed because when men show that competitive edge that uh, tenacity that firepower all of a sudden it's appropriate but when and when white women do it too and when white women do it too yeah when men do it and white women so the only difference is the fact that she's black and women do it well now it's out of line when caitlin clark did it she had that mamba mentality that dog in her but when angel reese did it now she's classless what okay I so, so so you know when he did it he was talking back and oh, we don't need to play this he was talking back and forth and back and forth and back and forth but just so we can have a firm a, a better understanding let me get to the we got another super chat come came in thank you very much tom 20 dollars super chat says appreciate your commentary what the hell is he talking about it's about it is about race he's he's literally saying it's not just about race and then proving that it's just about race he's literally proving it's only about race in the same statement he's saying it's not just about race okay but there's some other things this this is him and he did this thing around like 2020 20 like yeah around 2020 2021 around that time at, right after george floyd and he was trying to bring white folk and black folk together listen to this Y'all listen to this. Oh, this is so sad. This is who Emmanuel Ocho is. And I got y'all got to know this prior to going into this. He had this thing on YouTube called conversations with a black man or difficult conversation, uncomfortable conversations with a black man. Okay, y'all listen to this. Welcome to the first of hopefully many episodes of Uncomfortable Conversations with the Black Man. In the midst of all this chaos in our world, so many of y'all have reached out to me, and by y'all, I mean white people, have reached out to me asking, how can I help? How can I join in? How Do you guys think that white people are reaching out to this tether? Because he is a tether. He is. Y'all think white people are like, how can I, Emmanuel, how can I help you? What do I do to help? I want to help. Okay. White, white people are reaching out. Okay. Okay. How can I stand with you? So I've created this for you. Um, because so mind you, he said he created this for you. He, he created this for white folk. Okay. Because in order to stand with us and people that look like me, you have to be educated on issues that pertain to me and fully educated so that you can feel the full level of pain, so that you can have full understanding. I the whole thing of white people don't, this is really white people aren't, this is throwing white people a bone and giving white people an out. Because you're trying to make it seem like racism is a thing that they don't really understand. They don't really know what they're doing. We got to educate them and, and show them the way and show them like, hey, when you call me the N-word, it hurts my feelings and you shouldn't really say that. This is the, can't we all just get along? White people, you're not that bad. This is what that is. This is what that is. I want you to understand, and the music is so, so dramatic. I want you to understand my hurt and I want you to understand my pain and understand when we get choked to death in the street that that it's not good. And I want you to understand that, Dad. Like, God. God, that's pathetic. OK, but listen to what he has to say. I, I fervently believe that if the white person is your problem, only the white person can be your solution. I got to process it sometimes. I, I already know what he's about to say, but I still got to process it. If the white person is your problem, only the white person can be your solution. That's, I swear to God. I swear to God. Let me take that back. Just in, just in case y'all did not hear what he just said. Let me just take that back. Okay. Person is your problem. Only the white person can be your solution. Oh. Is your problem. I, I fervently believe that if the white person is your problem, only the white person can be your solution. And so. 
Oh my God, okay. This is made for you, my white brothers and sisters, to increase your level of understanding so that you can increase uh, your level of compassion and lead ultimately to change. This is how he views white people. He said, my white brothers and sisters, if, if white people are your problem, only white people can be your solution. We need a white savior. We need white Jesus. And he believes in saving all white people. Listen to this. L look at this. If you don't think he believes in saving all white people, even the ones that's racist, listen to this. Uncomfortable conversation. Welcome to another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. I've read your emails, I've heard you, so I'm gonna start this episode a little bit different by reading an email that gave me hope, changed my life, and I promise it'll do the same for you. Lynn wrote, dear man. Now he said, this email, just keep in mind, he said this email saved my life and gave me hope. So this must be a powerful email that he's about to read. Let's hear, let's hear what it is. Okay. Dear Manuel, I grew up in the 1940s. My family were good people who were unconsciously racist. Negro was a term we used. Racism, like religion, was drummed into me. It's hard every day to choose not to judge, but I'm listening. I'm 73 and I'm still learning. Don't give up on people like me. I'm awake now and determined to wake others up. Bless you, my brother and my son. Well, Lynn, I won't give up on you. Yo, this is coming out of his mouth. I'm not exaggerating any of this. I'm not making none of this up. I'm not putting anything. I'm not mixing anything up. This isn't remix. This man, this, this dude sent an email saying, I grew up racist. I'm 74 years old. And I, it's hard. I'm still racist. It's hard not to judge, which means be racist. But you know, I'm learning. He's like, I'm not gonna give up on you. Okay. Okay. All right. But when I found out about it, was this clip? This is the clip that I found out about. It. I know this is is embarrassing. Thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you so very much. Um, Y'all listen to this. I simply submit, we weren't talking about Kenosha until after Jacob Blake was shot. We weren't talking about Wolf City, Texas until after Jonathan Price lost his life to a man in uniform. I fervently believe that an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. So that's why I'm here. Joining me on stage is uh, Ryan McGreevy, Brendan McGovern, Garrett Glaviano, and John Antonio. Gentlemen. Okay, so he bought four police officers, four white police officers to talk to him. Now, mind you, this was during the heat of the George Floyd uprisings. How are you? Doing Good. great. Thanks, Thanks for having us. having us. Of course, of course. Now, let's get uncomfortable. Ryan, when was the last time you had black people over at your house for dinner? Well, before COVID, I'll tell you that. He asked the white police officer, when was the last time you had black people over your house for dinner? When was the last time you had black people over your house for dinner? Oh, these are unquestionable, un uncomfortable questions. Okay. This, this is how he opens it up that um i don't know i can't i couldn't tell you yeah yeah uh and i'd ask you the same question well like when was the last time you sat down just to have a conversation uh with a group of black people garrett i can be honest with you i don't, I don't know that i've ever had a conversation with a group of black people yeah i would say that proximity breeds care and distance breeds fear Proximity breeds care and distance breeds fear. And I think one of the issues in our society is there's not enough proximity between people who don't look like each other. And because there's not enough proximity, there's a lack of care or lack of empathy. And there is a heightened amount of fear. Because 
there is not get this off because we don't live close enough to white people because white people and black people don't live close enough there's a sense of fear because pros- proximity brings comfort and, and care and love and distance brings fear and hate and resentment so we need to come together so we can really understand each other essentially this is saying what you guys do you guys don't really do it out of hate you just do it out of misunderstanding really and you guys are people too just like the other guy who was a 70 year old racist you know he's a people he's a person too and i love all of you okay and i just want you to know this this tap dancing as massa loving biscuit eating mentality coming from emmanuel prior to going into this all right prior to going into that so without any further ado time for the big clip that we all been waiting on before we do that i just want to show how this other guy in the blue was sitting up there just like tap dancing his eyes was bucking for caitlin his eyes was bucking look listen nothing special that girl last night, Caitlyn, is special. Mm-hmm. And we need to put her name with all the other greats. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say it right now without no championship. Joy, tell her you might not like it. <laughs> she is the greatest. <laughs> the greatest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know why? This is the reason why, though. First of all, reasons. first of all, I got two reasons why. Talk to me. Three reasons why. I'm she going to beat everybody, no matter who it is. Tall, big, better than me. I'm going to team watch. Okay. LSU. I watch her beat something. Now, mind you, the black dude just literally was all like, yeah, she is the greatest, the greatest of all time. She is the greatest female college athlete or female college basketball player of all time because she won this championship. Now, when Angel Reese won the championship last year, it didn't make her the greatest. But when Caitlin Clark won it this year, when she won the rematch, now she's the great. Now it's the greatest. Because she won the rematch. The way I see it, the tie is, the, the score is tied now. She won, you won. The score is tied. But, oh, no, 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 no. Caitlin is the greatest. Okay. Come on, last year. Yep. Another thing is, when I look at the um, um the talent level, though, like, I haven't seen nobody play like this since Steph Curry. Mm. Have you? Let alone a female? Mm. Hold on, can I ask you something? Oh, what's the girl different? Going? What's up? With no championships, you okay? Saying she's the greatest. Yeah, man. Basketball. You know why? Why? Because I, we can look at it differently, right? You may look at okay. Well, if a girl has so much accolades, she has those different rings and the championships, she got to be the greatest, mm-hmm. right? Because she got stats and she got rings. But when I look at um, um, UConn, that's what they do. All the generation, they all win. They all have great players. All Americans, all Americans, all Americans get on the top of crews. When you go to Iowa with regular girls and you are carrying them against a team like LSU, a team like South Carolina, who's bigger, who's faster, who's stronger, you get more credit than that. And that's for me. Okay. So I'm going okay. This man, I mean, I'm talking about tap dancing. I'm rolling with Caitlin Curry Clark as the best mm-hmm. basketball player we've ever seen in female sports. What? Let's get it. Did she, she said pro- the best basketball? Not, not, so this includes pro. I just want y'all to know I'm talking about eyes bucking, tap dancing, all of this stuff, just just all, off off the rails. I want you to think too. White sports anchors don't speak this way about black sports athletes. They don't, especially when a black sports athlete is in a field that's dominated by white people. You will never mark my words. If I'm wrong, please prove it. You would never hear a white sports anchor say this about a black hockey player. You would never hear them say that black hockey player is the best hockey player of all time. They would never do that. You could be the best. Tiger Woods went into the golfing competition, whooping everybody. White people didn't even want to acknowledge him until he was breaking so many records. When black people get into these really white, predominantly white dominated fields, you got to literally be the best undeniably so for white people to be like, oh, I guess he's cool. Like, oh, maybe, yeah, he's, yeah, I guess he's okay. 
That's what they get when it's up to them. When, when folks like this, the black folks, they be like, "Oh Lord, oh my God, she's so great!" Like, damn, calm down. You scraping the floor with all that tap dancing. Chill out. God, Lord have mercy. When black folks, the the second a white person, and this doesn't even have to do with just athletes. This we can go with rap. Or whatever. That's why black people love giving some of them love giving Eminem his credit. Eminem is the best. Com all that stuff. Y'all be sitting up there bucking y'all eyes when black people do anything somewhat halfway okay. Nigga. Oh, okay. So I just want you to see the 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 dude in the blue was just bucking his eyes. Bucking his eyes. Okay. That being said, let's continue. Let's continue, y'all. Y'all lock in with me. Now we're going to fast forward a little bit to what Emmanuel, and y'all saw the way Emmanuel was talking all sweet and soft and all that to the police now. Okay. LSU, easily a better team. Easy better team. I agree. And she dominated them girls. She did. And early on, we did see her struggle. Yeah. Like early yeah. on, yeah. that's when I was like, I was like, oh, this, this might go the way Shady thought it was going to go, yeah. right? LSU has such a better team. I was like, early on, I was like, you know what? This ain't going to go Caitlin Clark's way. Kudos to her. But here is the conversation, Ooh, America. I can't wait. That, um, you, you hear him say, ooh, I can't wait. Ooh, I can't wait to defend my queen. I will preemptively... Not apologize. Pop it off, Acho. But I will preemptively let you all know to turn your volumes up, get comfortable in your seats, because we're about to go there. I uh, I felt some type of way about that. I felt some type of way. And, 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 and here's what I am about to do. I'm about to give a gender-neutral, racially indifferent take. Now. And, and he prefaced that. He pre I'm going to give a gender neutral, racially indifferent take. Why would you have to prephrase that if you knew he knew what he was saying was going to be some massive coon? He knew it. He knew it. That's why he said, well, it's not about. Yes, it is. Because what Angel Reese was complaining about was the fact that she's being racially treated differently. I'm about to give a gender neutral, racially indifferent take. No, the hell you not. Oh, how many white people do you give gender neutral, racially indifferent takes to? If you want to say, well, Acho, cater your take based upon gender, Acho, cater your take based upon race, I will understand that. But I'm about to give a gender neutral, racially indifferent take. Angel Reese, you can't beat a big, big bad wolf, but mm. then kind of cry like Courage the Cowardly Dog. Mm. Because if you want to act grown, which she has, if you want to get paid like you grown now, now mind you, look, listen to all of the things that he lists that she does that makes her the villain. She acts grown. Well, I mean, she's a young woman, but she is grown. She's she's grown. Which you are, if you want to talk to grown. Oh, if you want to act grown, gender get neutral, racially indifferent take. Angel Reese, you can't beat a big big bad wolf, but mm. then kind of cry like Courage the Cowardly Dog. Mm. Because if you want to act grown, which she has, if you want to get paid like you grown, which you are, if you want to talk to grown folks like you grown, which you did. If you want to talk to grown folks like you grown, okay. And when you told a coach for an opposing team, watch your mouth. If you want to so, And some people were saying she didn't, she didn't actually tell a coach to watch their mouth. She told another player. I want you to see the fact, in case y'all haven't seen it, in case y'all haven't seen it, Caitlin Clark was out there yelling. Let, let's just play just one, one last time. Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeye Clark out there. Over the Holy Cross. Offensive foul. Screaming and yelling and getting all up in the ref's face. Now, when Angel does anything, she's the villain and she deserves all of the things that's happening to her. All of the things. Yet, Caitlyn's sitting up there knocking people down left and right, yelling at people, cursing people out. Don't, she's America's sweetheart. She's America's sweetheart. Just keep that in mind from what, by what he's saying, though. Just keep that in mind. Because none of the criticisms that he's giving Angel... Does he give to Caitlyn at all, period? 
all of this was you shouldn't have acted like the villain if you didn't want to be treated if you didn't want to be racially objectified and sexualized you shouldn't have been talking shit that's what he's saying to her but he's not going to say that to the white girl let continue continue how people get your money up then post game when you take an l you just got to take it on the chin nobody mourns when the villain catches an l and Angel Reese, you have self-proclaimed to be the villain. Shout out to you, because you were the second best basketball player on the court, and it was not close. Outside of Caitlin Clark, it was you. 17 and 20. Dog. Showed up. Biggest game, second biggest game of your career. Absolute dog. But you can't, under any circumstance, go to the podium and now try to ask for individuals to give you sympathy no one has sympathy for the villain and nobody she never asked for nobody to give her sympathy she never asked for that what is he talking about he's lying like she was up there begging and all this she wasn't doing none of that you painted the bullseye on your back why are you surprised when people shoot at you so if you why are you surprised when people shoot at you you painted the bullseye on your back by what being black by being black she painted the bulls out on her back mind you let's let's just play another clip y'all this is angel reese she got into some contact with her defender i think it's a shooting foul underneath this is, that's angel reese y'all. Clark, which... she's not painting a bullseye on her back though keep that in mind she's not painting a bullseye on her back okay it's cool when she does it it's a problem when angel does it though because when Angel, when Angel just talks, when she's just taunting, then it's okay for people to quote unquote what he says is shoot at her. Oh, you put you put the you put the target there. Okay. So all of the people calling her uh the N-word, people calling her a monkey, people calling her a mosquito, people uh, making fake AI uh pornos of all of that stuff. That's a fine because you, quote unquote, put the target on your back yourself. Okay. But ain't nothing, ain't nothing at all um, Caitlyn could do to do that either. Nothing Caitlyn could do would put a target on her back to justify all of that stuff. If you want to pose grown, if you want to talk grown, if you want to talk to grown folks grown, then you gotta take the L like you grow. Because what frustrated me is when you wanna be the villain, but you wanna hope for sympathy like a hero. No villains in any sports get that kind of sympathy. Whether it was Richard Sherman in his prime, whether it was Baker Mayfield in college, whether it was Steve Smith, whether it was a keep to the lead, whether it's Draymond Green, if you wanna be the villain, you gonna have to take it like a villain. So the only if you thing- now, I want you to keep in mind, I want you to keep in mind, He's calling Angel Reese the villain. This is why I played that clip before. Because when the white man said, I've been racist my whole life and I'm still racist, but you have hope for me. He was like, I will have hope for you, Massa. I will have hope for you. He sent up there talking to these police officers. Well, when is the last time you've been to Popeye's with a black man? These sent up there doing all of this shucking and jiving and tap dancing in front of white folks. Like, I just want us all to come together, my white brothers and sisters, to understand me and my pain and my blackness. Now, now, hold on. Now, when it comes to Angel Reese, though, oh, if you're going to act like the villain, you got to get treated like the villain. If you're going to act tough, you're going to get treated like you're tough. You shouldn't have been putting a target on your back. He didn't say that when a white racist man emailed him and said, hey, I'm racist. But, hey, give me a chance. Oh, I will give you a chance, Massa. I love you, Massa. He didn't do that with them. But now Angel Reese, she just talks a little shit after the game. Then it's, oh, well, you deserve it. You put the target on your back. You shouldn't have did that. It's all your fault. No matter what happens to you, you did it. You shouldn't have said it. You shouldn't have said you the villain. He says he's racist. Well, I mean, well, people make mistakes. All the 70 years of life. Yeah. Who's perfect, really? Okay. Okay. This dude is pathetic. I think I didn't like because Angel Reese's performance, it was phenomenal. But post game, post game, when you go to the podium and now you want sympathy, where was sympathy for all of those who you exposed your villainness towards? I don't.
where she exposed her villainous towards. What villainous? Where she exposed her? What is she? You make it seem like she was out here beating folks up. The way the way they're telling it. Now I want you to just keep in mind. I I got I just got to keep playing it. I just got to keep playing it for context. Clark, I want you to keep in mind. Does this not look villainous to you with all? Her defender. I think it's a shooting foul underneath. Or yeah, that, something against. No, that's not villainous though. No, that's not villainous. That's not villainous. No, 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 no. No, that's not villainous. Pushing her down, just shoving her down to the ground. That's not villainous. She's not exposing her villainous to the rest of the players now. But if if Angel Reese does this. After Caitlyn does it, then she's exposing her villainous. So that's where the line is drawn. That's where the line is drawn with him. I don't know. That's where I was at, Shay. No, I, 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 listen. I agree with you. Now, she, she is young. She's a young girl. And she's growing to her, her adult age. So I, I get that. But this is a lesson, though. Because you, you can't beat on your chest. You the, you the villain. You the big bag wolf, right? Like you've been doing. I watched games you played last year and this year. You taunt on the fans. You, you girls get fouled out. You waving them by, right? You, 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 you accepting that role, and I love that. I was like, yeah. Listen, you holding it down. I like that. But then when you lose, you act like that. The tears? Give me a tissue. No, 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 no. It's a thing they call ten toes down. If you and act- mind you, she was not. And you guys saw the video in its full context. She was not really crying and weeping. First off, nowhere near the way they're making it seem like she was. And she wasn't doing that because she lost. If you had a whole year of you just uh, out of the blue being the racial target uh, for your, for all of women's college basketball, you're the racial target. You're the one people are sending death threats to. And then you you have your break, and this is not the first time she complained about it either. And you have your breaking point. Now people want to be all like, "Oh well, you shouldn't you shouldn't have been waving the white girls by." A certain way, and you gonna talk out, and you are gonna be big and bad, right? And you gonna have a voice of your own, and you don't care who you offend or what you say. That's what it this is. This is essentially saying you shouldn't have been uppity. That's everybody's issue with Angel Reese. Everybody's issue with Angel Reese is Angel, you was too damn uppity. And you shouldn't have been uppity. You should have been humble. You shouldn't have really beat the white girls in the first place. And you should have been humble about it if you did. That's your problem. And you deserve to be punished. Essentially, this is what they're saying. You deserve to be punished for beating them white girls. That's what he's saying. That's what they're all saying. That's what they're all saying. Now, we also discussed the fact that they also try to make this um, a gender and a, a race issue, even though that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but they'll they'll attempt to do that still, make this a gender and a race issue. Okay. I want to fast forward a little bit. I want to fast forward just a little bit to get what the, um, the woman said about it, Joy. Who made her the villain? She said she was. Hold on. That crowd was crazy. Like, come on. Go, Joy. And now wait for this. I'll say this. I really enjoy villains. Mm -hmm. I like villains. Mm -hmm. I like villains more than most. But why is she a villain? Because of what she does on the court? She said she was. Who made her the villain? She said she was the villain. Self-proclaimed. Who made her the villain? Because someone made her the villain. And it wasn't her. She was being herself mm. and bragging the same way that all athletes brag when they win, when they when they hit a big shot, when they do this. I've, I've seen it a million times, yeah. but we don't talk, mm. talk about them the way that we talk about Angel Reese. Mm. So it's very easy to say that we're just now gonna... I, this this part right here. I agree with this statement right here. She did not make because everybody all like, well, you you said you was the villain. Hold on, no, but no. The court of public opinion already deemed her as the villain. And she said, essentially, she said that she what she wasn't going to do is she wasn't going to be shucking and jiving. She didn't say, I want to be a villain. I want to be a bully. I want to be mean. I want to be uh, evil. She didn't say none of that stuff. 
everybody on her team talks about how much they love her. But the the court of public opinion, because she beat that white girl, and how dare you do that, you uppity Negro. That's when she became the villain. She became the villain year a year ago when she did this. This is when she became the villain. Now, Caitlin Clark, of course, she she's America's hero. She didn't become the villain. She didn't become the villain. But that's when Caitlin became the villain. I mean, Angel. That's when Angel became the villain. So I agree with that. She didn't make herself the villain. She was just instantly deemed as a villain and a villainous person for doing the same thing that Caitlin was known to do. She was known to do all of that. But the fact that Angel did it now, she, oh, she's the villain. How dare you? You Negro. You uppity Negro. How dare you? But, the, the but then, 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 okay, then she kind of loses me a little bit. We're going to have to get into it. Who made her the villain? She, she said did. she was the villain. Self-proclaimed. Who made her the villain? Because someone made her the villain, and it wasn't her. She was being herself mm. and bragging the same way that all athletes brag when they win, when they, when they hit a big shot, when they do this. I've, I've seen it a million times. Yeah. But we don't talk about them the way that we talk about Angel Reese. Mm. So it's very easy to say that we're just going to eliminate the fact that she is a young girl and eliminate the fact that she is a black girl and eliminate the fact that she's an unapologetic black girl. We can take all that out. I love playing the we don't see color game. We don't see gender game. Let's do that. Do we talk about men who brag after winning or hitting a big shot the way that we talk about Angel Reese? I'll clear it up for you. We don't. We don't do segments about that because it's very common. We're used to seeing it. It's, it's absorbed differently. Mm -hmm. There's an expectation of how Angel Reese is supposed to act. The reason now, we know did you that just is hear that? She said, do we talk about men? So she just turned this and we just explained that this is, of course, a racial issue. And she was starting off real well. And then she she pivoted and then said, do we talk about men? This is not a gender issue. This isn't even a gender and race issue. This is a racial issue. Do we talk about men? No, you don't talk about men, nor do you talk about white women. So this ain't no damn gender issue. I mean, this is a race issue. This The only difference between Caitlyn and Angel is race. And they're treated night and day doing the same thing. And it is because of race. Why do you all bring gender up in this situation at all? What the hell? It's because of the reaction that we got from her. And we, when she did that to Caitlin Clark last year, people didn't like it. Men do that all the time. Joe Why do men do that all the Kate, you would, she would, she would make such a good point if she said Caitlin did it first and nobody had an issue. But she's saying men do it all the time. No, you're turning this from a racial problem into a gender problem. And it, you're not going to get anywhere because Caitlyn is white and she did it. So it completely dismantles the fact that this could be about gender. What are you doing? so many clips of men doing this and this and this and so this, what, what, and this what about and this. the more what about the more talks to, to other players though all men do this all the all, they do, all, all men, players what, do it. okay and, and this is this is then men do it men do it men do it joy joy why are you no, look and she was the only one really up there kind of saying something halfway okay and then she just flipped she just went left she was steering the ship correctly and it, and it went left what, what are you doing that for this is a problem when we have racial issues and then we have people who want to add other isms into our racial issues and that waters it down. It makes the racial aspect of the problem less severe when you add other isms to it. When you say, well, hold on, is this, this is racism, but it's also sexism. And it is a little bit of classism too, because Angel did grow up kind of poor and Caitlin really didn't grow up that poor. So it is a little bit of classism too. And Angel, she's like three months older. So it's ageism as well too. We can also say it's heightism. Angel is taller. It's heightism. 
You know what I'm saying? Like when you add all of these other isms in it, it waters down the racial aspect of it. And none of that other, all of these other isms don't make sense in this context. The only, the only difference is not their behavior because they behave the same way. Angel, she, you know, she is known for talking trash. She's known for that. She's known for that. So is Caitlyn. So is Caitlyn. And Caitlyn's not only known for talking trash, she's also known for playing dirty too. So they're both known for the same thing. Okay. They're both good players. The only, they're both around the same age, in the same field, all that. The only difference, only difference is one is white and one is black. And you see a night and day hero and villain treatment between the two. There is no difference except one is white and one is black and one is being called milk and cookies and the other one is being called Louisiana hot sauce. One is being called America's sweetheart and the other one is being called a dirty deputant. One is being called a hero who's, who's revolutionary, revolutionizing women's sports and another one is called the villain who is dividing women's sports one is not receiving death threats one is receiving death threats one is not being made into a sexual object where people are photoshopping ai images of her doing adult content and one is and the only difference is the race and you get folks up there first off like Emmanuel shucking and jiving and being all like, oh, you the villain, you the one who, who you said you were the villain. We got to hold you to that standard now. You the one who said it, you said it. So it's you, you the big bad wolf, right? Ain't you? But you ain't going to talk to a racist white man like that. You got, you got all this spine for a, a black young, a young black woman. But a racist white man can say, hey, I'm racist. Be like, well, I do forgive you, Jesus. I mean, mess. I mean, that I mean, sir. That that's that's how you act, Emmanuel. You need to go back to Africa with that dude. Or the other dude, I don't know where the other dude is from. And Joy. Way to defend his sister, huh? Joy. Way to way to way to bring it home, ain't you? Just drop the damn ball. You had it and you dropped it. Just drop the whole damn thing. You was making a good point. You could have owned both them men, but then you said, well, men, are you okay, woman? What is wrong with you? Had the perfect layup and missed the damn thing. Dro quite literally dropping the ball. All of this stuff, everything we've shown you night and day, the only difference is race. And this goes not just, this is beyond Angel Reese. This is beyond Caitlin. Um, this is, a this is beyond even the basketball. This is beyond, this is the fact that a black athlete, you are supposed to remain humble, especially in the presence, especially when you're competing against white people and you don't ever get uppity. That's, that's the problem when it comes to Angel Reese. She's too uppity. That was the problem when it came to, uh, Shikari Richardson. She was too uppity. She was too, yo, you're too uppity. You're too confident and arrogant. It's not that you're mean, not that you're bullying anybody, not that you're doing anything really wrong, but you need to be humble and, and grateful that you're here. You just need to be grateful that you're allowed to be in here and allowed to entertain me. That's what you need to be grateful. They don't treat white athletes like that. Simone Biles, when she wanted to leave, how dare you make a decision for yourself? Oh, you don't get to do that. You and you you belong to me. They view athletes like slaves on a plantation. You are there to work. You are not there to have an opinion. You are not there to buck the system. You are not there to even enjoy yourself. How dare you look like you're having a good time? How dare you look like you're laughing? How dare you look like you're enjoying this? How dare you beat a white person? Oh, how dare you? And this is why 
it all goes back to this right here. All goes back to it. This is the racial issue. Now, I will say, I am happy that our sister, Angel Reese, I'm happy that she's leveling up and doing well for herself because turns out she's actually making the decision for herself to show you. She's making the decision for herself, and this is what she wanted to do, to join. She announces that she's leaving LSU for the WNBA. So she's she's going to join the WNBA. This was announced, or it was updated yesterday. So we, we don't really have to read too much into it. Good for her. I'm happy for her. I am. I am happy for her. That's good for her. I'm glad she's able to do what she feels like is the best decision for her to do. It's crazy that she couldn't join the big three, though. Ice Cube. You offer Caitlin Clark that opportunity. You didn't offer Angel Reese that opportunity. Angel Reese, would now he offered that opportunity to Caitlin Clark before she won the championship. He didn't offer that to Angel Reese even after she won the championship. But, oh, okay. She didn't get that. Okay. But you know what? She got another deal, and I'm happy for her. Shout out to her. And I absolutely wish her the best when she goes pro. She was phenomenal in her uh, college, college league. Now she's going pro. Now she's deciding to go pro, and that's good for her. And, and, and shout out to the rest of the team. I hope they do well as well, too. Shout out to them. I'm happy for them. This is the racial issue because to them, entertainment, to all of them, to really do to a degree, is really a plantation for them. And her issue is the fact that she's gotten too uppity. And all and what this exposed is that you got a lot of people sitting up there shucking and jiving for their masses. That's it. Oh, there's a whole bunch of massa loving, biscuit eating, tap dancing, eye bucking behavior. With this, it's a lot of it, and we just expose a whole lot of it. Emmanuel, you don't got no respect nowhere. There ain't nobody respects you. Nobody, not your colleagues, not the black community, not white folks, not your white master. Nobody respects you. He is not respected among anybody. Neither, especially Jason Whitlock. Neither is none of them. But this goes to show. When they say, oh, it's not about race. It is. It is. It's always. It always is. Every time. Every competition. Every championship. Every everything. It always is. It always is. But shout out to Angel Reese for moving on to the next chapter. Hopefully a better chapter in her professional career. Also, to give another shout out. Today is my younger sister's birthday. My younger sister has turned 16. She has Sakina. She's sometimes in chat room today. She's not today. She turned 16 years old today. So happy birthday to my sister. Turned 16. Who is Ocho? Ocho is a, is a desperate tether. Yeah, that's what he is. That's who he is. He's been tap dancing for a long time. Yes, indeed, he has. But he has no respect. And eventually, him being called out like this so much, yeah, he ain't, he ain't going to be able to last too much longer. He ain't going to be able to last too much longer because he's ruining his credibility to speak on these issues. He says, um, congratulations to Angel. You said, uh, thank you very much, Hurricane. says, congratulations to Angel. Screw those minstrels. Yes, they are. Screw them. Those um, tap dancers, screw them. Many, thank you, thank you very much. I'll let her know you wish her a happy birthday. Now, family, like I said, we do have a sale going on 20% off all merchandise for two days. Two more days, y'all. The link is in the description. Get yourself some merchandise, get yourself some two days, and we get the new design. You see, it's reverse. You see this design right here, brand new, made myself. It's great. Get yourself one. And then we got the FBA shirts, all that. People love it. We got the, the mug, too. 
all that, all that 20% off. Okay. Link is in the description. Shout out to, I think we missed, did we miss a couple super chats? Let me see. Uh, Tim, I think he says, appreciate your commentary. What in the hell is this? Uh, no, I think we already got that one. Um, and then we got another one from Tom. Oh, he was telling the first time this dude is the biggest flunky. Then another one from uh, DSB. He says he's he's a foolish. He looks. Uh, let me see. He's a foolish. He's as foolish. My side. He's as foolish as he looks like a um, Bart Simpson. He does. He does. He does. That's a funny. <laughs> he does. He does. Um, it says this is the. And select it. Yes, and I can. I it's the font is a little bit smaller on here. Back channel. The end select kick black channel. The American Society of Magical Negroes is alive and strong with these tethers and sellouts. Yeah, definitely it is. It definitely is, and it shows we got a big problem. Because it's not just the white folks, it's the black folks sitting up there. Oh my god, Caitlin. And shout out to you. I appreciate I think that might I don't re recall your name. That might be your first super chat. Thank you very much for your support and love. I appreciate that. Another one for Miss Green. Thank you for highlighting this racial hypocrisy. I appreciate you for being here. I appreciate you for supporting. I appreciate you for watching. I appreciate that. Another one, of course, we already addressed our brother Hurricane. I appreciate every single last one of you, brothers and sisters. Make sure that you guys follow me on my very social media pages. The link to that is in the description below. So follow me on my very social media pages and make sure before you guys leave, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit all of that stuff. Hit that share button, retweet this, post this on Facebook, all of that stuff. Tell a friend, tell a family, tell your mama, everybody. All of that stuff helps the reach and the growth of the channel. And for everything that you guys do, I sincerely appreciate every single last one of you guys. And thank you guys so very much. Now, of course... With that being said, B1 salute to every single last one of you all. And of course, you all have a good one.